Good morning and good evening, night, everyone. This is Rob from The Code Always Wins, and today I'm going to bring you the second update for my Retro Chaos game engine. So I've been working on this for about three weeks now. You know, it's been going pretty well. Like, there's not too much in here, but from how fast it's going and just doing it on my free time, it's, it's honestly pretty exciting. I didn't think I'd have this much to talk about. There's obviously still issues, but that's completely natural and it's actually expected with the way it's supposed to work. So uh, over time, there's gonna just keep on adding on to that. It's, uh, you know, it's obviously gonna take a bit of work, but let's get into what's going on here. So I've been working on debugging and uh, just being able to do that more easily. So, and also just cleanly. So I can actually now just insert like a line of code and it'll let me attach that to an object and I can actually print, you know, what's going on there really easily. So I can use a debugger and I, and I might, but you shouldn't look in a debugger first. Uh, and this, this is obviously not everything going on. There's tons and tons of stuff underneath the hood, but this is just to highlight, you know, the main things. Like if I'm doing math with velocity and gravity, which is the V and the G variables you see printed there, I'm going to be looking at those and just making sure that things make sense. Now, uh, you also see that there's something called the G-force, and that is not a uh, sexual organ, that is not related to, you know, the Air Force pilots or anything like that. It's just short for gravity force, and I don't, I don't usually use acronyms, I think it's kind of bad practice, but I think that with some specific uh, exceptions, which are also not generally good, but with game development, you do a lot of math, and uh, a lot of that involves the velocity and the gravity, the angle, and so it's only natural that you don't have to list that out every single time. And so yeah, let's get further into this. Uh, so the G-force there, that's new. You actually have like variable jump height. So basically what, what the G-force is saying is like the player, depending on where that is, it, it allows the player, like it tracks whether the player can hold the button further or not. So once, you, once it goes upwards, it means that I'm holding the button. And once it goes downwards, it means that you're at a specific gravity. So it's like still going up, but it's it's kind of down. And the reason you have that is because once you're going downwards, you want to flip the gravity immediately. And you don't want, like, once you get past a certain threshold, the it'll automatically be registered as downward. This is just one way of doing that. But if you didn't actually push the gravity further with the user, they wouldn't have so much control over that. And this is actually like how the older games work. So once you let go of the button, the player actually gets set to a minimum uh, gravity. Because even if there was a curve, you would still go way too high. So in order to make those tiny jumps, you'll go over like some small platforms. You'll be able to do that. Now another thing you'll notice is there are actual slopes. It's not just like a 90 degree angle wall. Uh, so this has been done by several devs by now outside of like Sega themselves. You've seen Sonic Mania, the guys there seem like they know their stuff and it's really awesome. But for any Sonic engine, it's usually one of the biggest hassles to do that. Now this is actually doing like real-time collision, so it's not quite as optimal as just mapping the floors and everything. But the benefit of that, of, of just having real-time collision, is that I can actually just build out levels. I didn't have to make any tooling or anything or, or edit some values internally. Which I do plan on doing uh, because I want this to go as fast as possible. I just I want to go fast, like Sonic, you know, if you know the meme. Uh, and if you are interested in Sonic, it's likely that you know the meme. If you care, if you're that kind of person. But it's okay if you don't. I'm just I'm mostly just kidding. So now another thing, uh, when you're actually walking around uh, and you jump off of, like you, you just go so fast that you leave on this quarter pipe for example so it actually converts the uh, so you see the velocity moves when I when I'm walking that determines how fast the players speed along the ground is and when the velocity actually hits a certain angle and they leave the floor uh, it'll actually transfer over smoothly and just you know and, and there's also this little cheesy animation effect so I didn't want to use 360 degrees so I want to keep it like retro I'm not actually looking at all of the emulation uh, code. I know that at Sonic Retro, they they do have like serious breakdown of every single aspect of that. And I thought that because I'm covering so many different games, I want to make this thing really flexible and holistic. Uh, and I, I don't want to think about things with a clear slate. So I'm not actually doing this with like a frame of reference from the original games. It's, it's just engineered from scratch, pretty much. Um, so. Now, 
with that in mind, uh, going back to debugging, I also made it a lot easier to change the uh, way that you're looking at things. So, you know, I was playing with shaders a bit, and th that was pretty fun. And you can see Sonic is actually colored in white. And that's just so that you can see like any designated masks that I'm putting there. And I'm actually automating this so that I can draw specific masks because masks are technically just coordinates and you're swapping them. They're not actual objects in the world. Uh, so yeah, you can see his bottom collider there and that actually rotates when you're moving. So this is sort of the foundation. Now there's also two other bottom sensors there and then there's some left and right and top sensors, but I don't want to draw everything because right now I was working on slopes not polluting my mind I'm only watching what I want to watch with this. And I also made it a, a little bit easier so like it's, it's you can you have to kind of hold up and it's not just you tap it because it was really easy to accidentally press the debug things before now like I'm not sure how long this debugging stuff will go on for so uh, but it does help the development go along a lot easier in it this is kind of a diary of, of all this stuff so I figured that I would talk about that. now another thing there that uh, was done is like there's controller support like better controller support so I, I expanded on that a little bit uh, just refining the code so that it's it's really simple to look at like it's not a big hassle to use so you can just reference the gamepad and this is all like iterative I guess you say like agile development you know but uh, except not crappy so I'm actually like iterating on things as they go on and just making them better like you know just Kaizen if everybody's ever heard of that but yeah, so right now uh, I added uh, from the last update, I couldn't actually use my retro controller because my retro controller registered the D pad, which I have a retro flag Genesis controller, and, but it registered the D pad as an analog stick. And there was no analog support. And analog is actually on an axis, it's not a button, so you have to do like extra coding for that. So now it supports analog controllers. And I actually even have a threshold there for that. Now there's obvious issues, like you saw, you just had a stop animation there. And then also there's a little jitter here. And that is actually because I have real-time collision, because this is pixel-based. So, you know, if you were to simply take the angle between, you have to be very careful with the way that your masks are underneath. You'll also see that there are like transparent backgrounds and there's like a uh, mask be behind them. So before this actually wasn't like this last week, there's actually like quite a lot uh, under the scenes or something so I guess, you know, feature uh, lacking, for a better word, though that is obviously changing quickly, but yeah, uh, it's new. And uh, try to just align the tiles and stuff, it's like, oh, it's, it's, just, it's on my free time and I'm just like trying to code and I'm like, I, I gotta, you know, adjust this art and everything, but I do want this to look really pretty, so, you know, once that a lot more of the engine is in there, it's gonna, it's gonna look a lot better. Um, also, I'm not particular about the Sonic 3 sprite, it was just a lot easier to import all of those graphics because I could find them like on the right offset and uh, yeah, I just wanted to streamline importing that as soon as possible. But since you can swap out the characters in this engine and everything, there was, there was really no point to be like, oh well I have this specific sprite or this one, it's just like, okay, the Sonic 3 sprite works and also the physics that I'm basing it off of are from that game. Now, I haven't really looked into Sonic 2 so much. Uh, that is one of the best games, but my favorite personally was Sonic 3 and Knuckles on Genesis, so that's where I based the motion and everything on. Another thing, the acceleration is still a little off. Um, I haven't really tweaked that because it was just uh, I was just trying to test going through the loops and transferring over, so it's like, you know what, it's faster than it should be, but that's fine. But it does have like pushback, so, um, and for in terms of the uh, the jitteriness, there's actually a way to get rid of that, so I'm just going to like make it so that the animation angle has a little bit of a buffer between that. This is only like on a single frame when it's encountering those pixels. So there's one more thing, I've just been kind of like learning how to do shaders in, in Game Maker and uh, like I had learned about them theoretically, n never really like implemented them and I just had a lot of fun with this one. So you can see the background is kind of like a rainbow, it's very pride feeling, so you know, just representing pride. Uh, which I, I'm not gonna, this is not a channel about politics or any which way, I just thought it was fun and just like learning how to do those in Game Maker was really interesting. I've never really written them before, I've learned about them quite extensively but you know, it was a long time ago and it was like quite a lot to catch up on, especially like outside of work, I don't touch kind of any of this sort of stuff. But it was really interesting that, um, you know, just playing around with these effects. So you can see that it's 
what's actually happening is all the background are reacting to how close I am to them, but it's also based on where the character is and when the tile is in relation to the center of the room. But uh, yeah, it's just fun to look at versus just walking over some wireframes in a 16-bit game in like 2020, you know, and especially there's not too much to show. So those are like the most interesting thing I think of at this moment with like the non-focus on graphics. But there are some other things that are going to be really interesting I could use shaders for. Uh, and like for example Mega Man or uh, you know when he's charging his, his uh, weapon you don't have to actually have different frames to represent everything. So it actually cuts down a lot on dev work in a weird way. You know even though it's been like three days of just investigating and then figuring out how to apply those in Game Maker and then figuring out how to do that quickly. And I hope to have more time for this but you know I've got to get back down to the actual game physics and the, the sonic stuff. So for the next updates, uh, I'm going to actually be working on the spin dash, the uh, rolling, uh, those things that they're just going to be more fun to play around with and then I can start doing interesting things with the level. Now there's also like, you see how sonic kind of can go on, on half pipes for the moment? Well, he should also be able to go upwards and there should be like springs to 180 into those and go really fast. You know, that's it's sonic, so you got to go fast. I got to go fast. Um, outside of that, when you actually fall, it doesn't transfer the velocity. So that is actually something that's really important, obviously. It's just super awkward if you just fall and nothing happens. And then there's no actual left collision or top collision. It's, it, you can see it is kind of preventing you from moving now, which is new. But I didn't actually add the uh, physics there and like the player registering the, the velocity for that. So you see, it's, it's still there. You can't accelerate into it, but it should it should just stop. Uh, and that's just a matter of just wanting to put this video out there because it's Sunday night, gotta wake up for work, so you know how it is. Uh, lastly, I want to give a shout out to the Legend of Renegade for letting me use this background track that you're hearing. It's pretty sick. I would recommend you go to his channel and probably subscribe if you if you're into retro stuff. It's uh you know no pressure though, and uh, I wouldn't ask you here because this is a pretty pretty niche still thing. But if you if you like how this is going or you're just interested in Kind of like coding and other things. The more subscribers, the more it kind of like helps me to to sacrifice that time to want to be able to do this outside of work. And you know, I hope I have more time someday uh, to get into just the, the very uh, technical things. And in the meantime, thank you so much for your attention here, and thank you for your interest. I hope you want to stick around and see how this goes. Uh, Till next time.